Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, okay, let's continue. Animated History of England, part two. Sweeney, Swibney. I kind of like Swibney better. Um, if you're new to the channel, my name's Connor. Hello, I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. Love for you to join us, join the Discord, hit all the like buttons. The original link to this video will be at the top of the description below. Discord link will be right below that. Just click on that. Love to have you. Pull up the chair, the more the merrier. We are mostly nice. Melkor brings brownies. Okay, let's go. If you are not ready to learn. If you are not ready to learn, get the hell out of here. Nobody wants you here. There's the door. You're in the wrong class. Go to home mech. All right? Or just chill. That's fine, too. Let's go. Let's go. This episode is supported by Curiosity Stream. Head to curiositystream.com slash S-U-I-B-H-N-E to start watching for free today. Ragnar Lothbrok, the legendary Viking king of Denmark and Sweden, hangs in a cave suspended the... above a pit. His enemies, led by the king of Northumbria, taunt him through the night. He is released into a pit of snakes where he dies alone. As news of his death spreads to Denmark, his sons gather the greatest Viking army yet assembled and sail to war. They arrive on the shores of England, Vitzerk, Bjorn Einside, Uber, and Ivar the Boneless, commanding the great heathen army. Great channel. How you guys doing? Doing good? Hope you're ready to learn. I hope I am. Ewar and Reitha fought a base in over Northumbra land. And that folk a Yamlich played on. That war on Ormeta Thodnas and Ligresas. And Thurna Drakan war ye sailing over the lift of Leogende. After them, as in Chanyaris, the arm leech a hadron and mana, her yunk. So is like the this like P slash D looking letter E the same thing, you know, what V is today? And after pat that in pay the Adi Lego de God is Chirijan in Lindisfarne, Loch Reavlich and Manslicht. The Danes, who were first Vikings and then conquerors, took over vast swathes of England in the 9th century. This area was known as the Dane Law. The other half of England was Wessex and its tributaries, splitting England in two. Although, many Danes lived there as well. I want to create a nice atmosphere for you, for you guys to have a nice reaction. I like watching reaction videos myself, and there are some things that can annoy me, like what I'm doing right now, pausing. But I'm not doing that at the expense of not know of knowing what just went on so i'm just giving you a heads up i love you guys you're awesome but I, I i just i cannot if i if i am lost i'm going to backtrack i'm just giving you a heads up in the and its tributaries splitting england in two although many danes lived there as well in the Dane law, a unique Anglo-Danish culture emerged, having a profound influence on the English language and society. Alfred and his successors managed to chip away at the Danish holdings in the coming decades and eventually reconquered England under the House of Wessex, unifying it finally into the Kingdom of the English. Conquered Alfred and his successors managed to chip away at the Danish holdings in the coming decades and eventually reconquered England under the House of Wessex, unifying it. Sorry, I'm just trying to get his on name. The society. Alfred and his Alfred. the House of Wessex, unifying it finally into the Kingdom of the English, or England. But the Viking influence on in England was far from over. Ethelred the Unready was so afraid of the Danes that he paid off Viking raiders by reintroducing the Danegeld, making England a renewed target. He then made the monumental mistake by murdering all Danes in England in the St. Brice's Day Massacre. Wait. Then making raiders by re far from over. Ethelred the Unready was so afraid of the Danes that he paid off Viking raiders by reintroducing the Danegeld. The Unready. Okay. Making England a renewed target. He then made the monumental mistake by murdering all Danes in England in the St. Brice's Day Massacre. One of the... Danegeld, money paid to make Vikings leave. Note, while the order was given to kill all Danes, most were unharmed. These mur mental mistake by murdering all Danes in England in the St. Brice's Day Massacre. 
One of these murdered Danes was the sister of the Danish king Swain Folkbeard, who invaded England in 1003. Northern England crowned Swain as their king, which passed on to his son Canute the Great. After Ethelred's death, Canute was crowned king of all England and ruled a vast North Sea Empire. Although the House of Wessex returned to power after Arthur Canute died without an heir, and Edward the Confessor was chosen as king. However, Edward was a victim of political intrigue, and upon his death there were three claimants to the throne. Harold Godwinson, the Earl of Wessex, Knut the Great's grandson, Harold of Norway, and William the Bastard of Normandy, who once heard a rumour that okay. Edward had chosen him. The nobles <laughs> chose Godwinson, good and thus war ensued. Who? That Edward had chosen him. The nobles chose Godwinson, and thus war ensued. The War of 1066 began when Harold invaded from Norway, Eastings? winning the Battle of Fulford, but he was soon defeated by Harold Godwinson in the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Unlucky for Harold, a few days later, William invaded from Normandy and defeated Harold at the Battle of Hastings. William was crowned king and transferred the capital from Winchester to London as it was larger and closer to his- Okay, cool. So, let me get this straight. So, it's going to take me a while to get the names down, so I might not just- So, there's this- um, England is kind of held by this one ruler, and then you have this other ruler who could have a claim to the crown over in uh, Denmark or Norway, that area, and then you have a third ruler in Normandy. So there were those three three guys, one in Normandy, one on mainland England, one in uh, Scandinavia. And the one on mainland, mainland England was trying to repel the attack in the north from the guy from Scandinavia, and the guy from Normandy took that opportunity to go into the sail to the south of England, where the guy who was in England was already busy fighting the guy who had earlier invaded England. Okay, come on. William was crowned king and transferred the capital from Winchester to London as it was larger and closer to his home in Normandy. He then invaded the rest of England and became William the Conqueror. This is where England's history gets a bit French, as the House of Normandy was technically a vassal to the Kingdom of France, which caused a rivalry between the two kingdoms that would last until our day. The Normans also introduced the Code of Chivalrier, and more modern castles, helping solidify their rule. Thou shalt believe all that the church teaches, and thou shalt observe all its directions, thou shalt defend the church, thou shalt respect all weaknesses, and shalt constitute thyself the defender of them. Thou shalt love the country in which thou must wast born, thou shalt not recoil before thine enemy, thou shalt make war against the infidel without cessation, ces, uh, cessation and without mercy. Okay. Robert Cortos also led the first English troops in the first crusade in the Holy Land. Norman rule ended in civil war between Empress Matilda and her cousin Stephen of Blois, until Henry II inherited the throne, the first in the Angevin dynasty, who also ruled Anjou. Norman rule ended in civil war between Empress Matilda and her cousin Stephen of Blois, until Henry II inherited the throne, the first in the Angevin dynasty, who also ruled Anjou, Aquitaine, and Normandy through inheritance, and Brittany and Ireland through submission. This meant that now more of France is ruled by the English king than the French king, made more confusing when you remember that the Angevins were in fact hey, so ruled that's by cool. the- So that's my history right there. Um, like I said in the last video, I won't go, I went so far into tangent, but my, um, my parents and uh, uncles, aunts, they've been doing some research and I am definitely from Ireland, England, and fr a little in France, so. This is kind of cool. I feel like I'm learning about my own uh, history right here. Let's go. The Angevin dynasty, who also ruled Anjou, Aquitaine, and Normandy through inheritance, and Brittany and Ireland through submission. This meant that now more of France is ruled by the English king than the French king, made more confusing when you remember that the Angevins were in fact also French. Their most famous monarch was Richard the Lionheart, known as a wise and brave crusader who probably didn't speak a word of English. When Richard was campaigning in the Holy Land, his brother John rebelled against the crown. This is the foundation of Robin the Hood, a crusader who returned to England and fought against the injustices and tyranny of Prince John. Robin Hood is a disputed Communist. character, but was likely based against the injustices and tyranny of Prince John. Robin Hood is a disputed character, but was likely based on the sentiment of English. Another theory is that Hood was a Middle English dialect of wood, and Robin came from the word robbing. I just want to turn on this. Uh... Thing. 
So Ray, so Ray, let's go. Journey of Prince John. Robin Hood is a disputed character, but was likely based on the sentiment of English peasants who were loyal to King Richard, helping solidify Robin and his band of merry men into English folklore. Around this time, the Red Cross of St. George had been brought back from the Crusaders to form the flag of England. When John became king, he signed the Magna Carta, which stripped the crown of much of its power while continuing costly wars with France. This culminated in a civil war between Prince Louis of Carl. Johannes de Gratio Rex Angli Dominus. Uh, continuing costly wars with France. This culminated in a civil war between Prince Louis of France and Henry III, who won the war and installed the Plantagenet dynasty. The Plantagenet we are England. When John became king, he signed the Magna Carta, which stripped the crown of much of its power while continuing costly wars with France. This culminated in a civil war between Prince Louis of France and Henry III, who won the war and installed the Plantagenet dynasty. The Plantagenets were Angevins, but had lost the county of Anjou to the King of France during the war, and so could no longer claim the title. The Plantagenets are known for conquering Wales and entering into devastating wars with the Scots, who rebelled against the increasing English interference, and began the hundred- I saw someone I said in the last video I looked Scottish, so maybe I have some Scottish in me too. Devastating wars with the Scots, that I know who of. rebelled against the increasing English interference, and began the Hundred Years' War in France over the English-held Aquitaine. The expulsion of Jews was also commenced in 1290, ostensibly for religious reasons, but more importantly for the crown to inherit Jewish debt to pay for the wars. They also established the Parley with Lords, and to inherit in 12 the Scots, who rebelled against the Inquitaine. The expulsion of Jews was also commenced in 1290, ostensibly for religious reasons, but more importantly for the crown to inherit Jewish debt to pay for the wars. Inherit Jewish debt to pay for the wars. I don't exactly know what that means. Someone can let me know. They also established the parley with lords and other nobles called the commons, which we now call. I, I, what I mean, like, I, I know what debt mean. You know what I mean? You know what I mean in that I don't know. Also established the parley with lords and other nobles called the commons, which we now call parliament. The war with France also oh, brought the black interesting. debt to pay for the wars. They also established the parley with lords and other nobles called the commons, which we now call parliament. The war with France also brought the black death to England, which killed between 30 and 40% of the population. The decrease in population brought many changes to the land, notably labor shortages and the rise of wages, contributing to a rise in the lower middle class. The last Plantagenet king was Richard II, who was deposed by parliament in support of his cousin, the exiled Duke of Lancaster, Henry. Henry was made king as the first Lancaster dynasty, a cadet branch of the house War of Plantagenet. The English had emerged from the okay. cousin, the exiled last Plantagenet king was Richard II, who was deposed by parliament in support of his cousin, the exiled Duke of Lancaster, Henry. Henry was made king as the first Lancaster dynasty, a cadet branch of the house of Plantagenet. The English had emerged from the high middle ages as a new people, a crusading state now expanding their zone of influence beyond their island to Ireland, France, and the Holy Land. The language they spoke was evolving into Middle English, heavily influenced by Old Norse and Norman French. Then long and folk took on on pilgrimages, and palmers for to sake and strongest strongers to fair in the hallways, cooth and sundry land, and palmers Norman French. Then long and folk to go on pilgrimages, and palmers for to sake and strongest strongers to fair in the hallways, cooth and sundry landers. And specially from every shearer's end of England to Canterbury they went, the holy blissful martyr for to Sega that him hath hopen when that they were Sega. Could listen to her talk forever. Heavily influenced by Old Norse and Norman French. Then long and folk to go on pilgrimages and palmers for to Sega and So that's interesting. They said, um. Then long and folk to go on. She says long and folk. I, I know folk must be referring to people because doesn't folk mean people in German? It's only because I've seen so many uh, World War II documentaries of the mustache man screaming, Deutsche Volk! And that's just what I remember. So it seems like they, they sort of like in other languages where, like in Spanish, like you'll use the adjective after the noun, and it seems like, um, or bef after the noun, 
no, before the noun. No, after. So they're 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 kind of switching the um. I, I sorry, I, I sound like an idiot, but I, I am very interested in how um England came to um become what it is today because it does seem to be on the boundary of of um Germanic and Romance languages, and it seems like the Germanic sort of won out, but I think there are some uh, um, similarities between French and English as well. Influenced by Old Norse and Norman French. Then long and folk took on on pilgrimages, and palmers for to sake and strondes strondes, to fair in the hallways, cooth and sombre landes. And specially, from every shearer's ender of England, to Canterbury they wender, the holy blissful martyr for to Sega, that him hath hopen when that they were Sega. This reading was taken from the 26 minute documentary The History of English over at Curiosity. Then the people long to go on pilgrimage and palmers to go seeking strange strands to distant shrines well known in sundry lands and especially from pre from the end of every shire in England they to Canterbury went. I'm wondering why the TH here isn't the P. This reading was taken from the 26 minute documentary The History of English over at Curiosity Stream, today's sponsor. Understanding the way English evolved is a fascinating tale, especially since English oh, is yeah. now learned as a second language by more people than any other language in history. English is truly the lingua franca of the 19th century until today. You can watch this for free by using your one month trial by heading to curiositystream.com slash suibhne. That is the end of it. And if you'd like to support, you can do There's so a part at three. Patreon. Is there a part three? I don't know if there is. I mean, regardless, that was, that was cool. That was awesome. Great video. If there is another part, I'll obviously watch that. If not, stay tuned for another video. See you guys next time.